Hello everyone and welcome to uh, a new showcase video. So uh, this is a mod about the Third Crusade uh, and you know Europe during the t time period of the Third Crusade that was uh, just released for the original Realm Total War. Now technically this uh, Third Crusade mod is a sub mod of my favorite medieval era mod for the original Realm Total War, uh, Chivalry. Total War, which I've talked about a lot on the channel. Now, um, you might remember there is uh, already a sub-mod for Chivalry Total War called Fall of the Cross, Rise of the Crescent, which, if I'm not mistaken, begins in 1204 AD. Um, and there are a lot of differences between that sub-mod and this mod. So, a uh, couple differences are, I would say, this mod is less script-heavy, right? So uh, the Fall of the Cross, Rise of the Crescent campaign was pretty script-heavy. This one is more in line with vanilla Chivalry Total War, not too heavy on the scripts. Um, and uh, it's not fully complete. This is just the first release. So as you can see, the 2D art uh, is not present here, unfortunately. Um, most of the factions, most of the units are the same, but there are some important differences which I will uh, note in uh, just a second. So you can see in the faction list there are some differences. Um, so you've got two uh, Rus factions. You've got uh, Vladimir Suzdal, the Principality of Vladimir Suzdal, as well as the Principality of Kiev. You've got the Mongols on the map here. Um, you've also got a couple of factions that uh, replace other factions. So instead of uh, Kilikia, uh, Kilikia and Armenia, you have uh, Georgia. And instead of... Um, uh, I believe the uh, Bo instead of Bohemia, you have the Bulgarians, and actually uh, Pisa is replaced by the Lombard League, which um, in this mod comprise is comprised of Genoa and Milan, right? So it's essentially the Milan faction of um, this Third Crusade mod. So let's actually start here, and I'll show off some of these differences on the map. So uh, some of these changes are uh, interesting, and uh, some of them, uh, you know, they're a little bit debatable, in my opinion. Now, it, it's very different. This mod is uh, very different from the approach taken with uh, Fall of the Cross, Rise of the Crescent. It's more uh, stable as a result, so because it's not as uh, script heavy as Follow the Cross, Rise of the Crescent. As you can see, there's no no startup script here, like uh, FCRC has. Um, <clears throat> because of that, uh, and because of the way it was developed, and oh, by the way, it has the Roma Serectum environment. Uh, because of that, it's more stable, right? It's definitely more stable than that sub mod. Uh, it starts a bit earlier if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, the new factions are cool to see, definitely. So you've got... Uh, the Bul Here are some of the Bulgarian troops. Bulgarian swordsmen, Bulgarian spearmen, Pronoia cavalry, Cuman horse archers, um, Tsar's bodyguards. So it's uh, it's very cool indeed. It's good to... I, I think the the new the factions I'm happiest with, uh, I'm really happy to see Bulgaria, which uh, gets short shrift in a lot of um, medieval era Total War campaigns. And I'm very happy to see uh, Kingdom of Georgia. And, uh, you know, Kingdom of Georgia, I think, is the first faction I would add to chivalry. So I've been thinking, of course, for the past month or so about um, a possible medieval era mod, a successor to Chivalry for Rome Remastered. And uh, once they bump up the faction limit, I think Georgia should be the first faction added. Bulgaria is another great option. Um, 
And of course, uh, you can see the Mongols in the corner here. Oh, spoiler alert. Sorry, after the fact. Um, and you can also see uh, Vladimir Suzdal up in the north that's been added. Uh, Vladimir, it, it definitely fleshes out this um, northern frontier here. Uh, I, I might have chosen Novgorod, right, instead, but uh, Vladimir is okay. Uh, it does definitely flesh out the steppes here because, uh, yeah, the Cumans uh, here, the Kipchaks, uh, are definitely not... They're not the most well-developed faction in chivalry in terms of uh, how playable they are, how interesting they are. But you've got the Mongols, of course, on the map. It's great to see Georgia on the map, complete with a pretty nice unit roster. They share some units with uh, the um, Armenia, which has been, which they have replaced in this mod. So, of course, the Armenian provinces are uh, independent here um, in this sub-mod. And here are the new Italians. So, it, I know it says Lombard League, but then the, uh, the Italians also get Venice, right? Uh, and, I mean, Genoa was not directly controlled by Milan at this time. I, I probably would have been happy if... If they just chose one of these, if they just, you know, had Milan, that would have been fine. Or Lombard League, or Venice, or Genoa. Because, I mean, you know, Venice had other territories here, right? Especially on the Dalmatian coast, and... I don't know, I don't quite agree with this uh, layout for this sort of Italian... Amalgam faction. I know it's a little bit, it's inspired by uh, the portrayal of the Italians in Medieval 1. Of course, they, they, it was essentially the Lombard League, North Italy. Those were the Italians. Um, of course, the other faction that has been removed are the uh, Bohemians and the Zirids in North Africa. I'm a little sad to see them go, especially the uh, Bohemians. I think they were a nice, interesting faction. Uh, you know, kind of an underdog here. They don't have anywhere to expand, really. <laughs> but it was a fun campaign. It was a tough one, definitely. You had to, you know, maybe... Like in in my Let's Play as the Bohemians, uh, which I did several months ago, uh, you had to blitz Poland, and then you get attacked, inevitably, by your other neighbors, so that was a fun campaign. I'm sad to see it go. Uh, the Kilikian Armenian campaign was also fun. But uh, I think uh, Georgia definitely deserves inclusion because having just all this rebel territory up here and, you know, having all this rebel territory up here in the steppe really necessitated the inclusion of these new factions. Uh, and, of course, there are also some sort of crusader state Factions here in uh, with the Holy Romans in Riga and the Danish Crusaders in uh, Reva in Estonia. Um, and of course, uh, you do have the Crusader states down here. Uh, so you've got uh, the Sicilians controlling Antioch. You've got uh, the French controlling Tripoli. Uh, you've got the, the the Holy Romans controlling Sidon, and you've got uh, the English at Tyre with uh, Richard, of course, a Richard Plantagenet, <clears throat> in um, ready to fight in the Third Crusade here, and uh, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, and the English also control uh, Nicosia, Cyprus. So it's actually very cool. Um, it's a very cool start date. It's good to see. Uh, so as as England or France and the Holy Romans, you've got a lot of fronts to fight on. That's for sure. Holy Romans are fighting, of course, on their home turf and also in Italy and in the, the Baltic and the Baltic Crusades. Uh, but they've also got an army and a territory in the Near East. So let me actually quickly uh, restart this uh, campaign here. And I'm going to show off the Crusader State mechanic. I've shown this off in a couple of different videos, uh, but 
you know, for those viewers who have not seen those videos, I can do that again. So let's go for the English, I suppose. And the English start, it looks like England starts out overpowered, but it's really not. It's uh, you're in extreme debt because of Richard, of course. You've got a whole bunch of angry territories in France. And um, yeah, it's going to be hard uh, to keep control of that. But uh, let me show off uh, Richard's army here. So you've got uh, Crusader units as well as regular English type units, crossbowmen. Uh, sergeants, Kingdom of Jerusalem, Foot Knights, Mounted Sergeants, Norman Knights, Crossbearer plus Night Guards. Very cool to see. So of course, and you've got some more Crusader type units, Latin Men at Arms in um, Pisan Sailors, Pilgrims in Tyre as well. And uh, so basically your territories in the Near East and in the Baltic, if you're doing Baltic Crusades, you get the ability to construct this building called Crusader State Proclamation. And this really improves the public order in the province that's really far away from your home provinces. And then as you upgrade the building, uh, it gives you the ability to recruit a lot of uh, some other Crusader State units like Crusader State crossbowmen, infantrymen, uh, right, and then as you construct uh, other buildings like feudal province estates, you get access to units like uh, Maronite infantry, Latin men at arms, uh, Armenian cavalry, and uh, vassal foot knights. And uh, the Crusader churches give you religious fanatics, which are not not the best units. Um, but yeah, it's very a very cool Crusader State mechanic, of course, since chivalry is based on uh, Rum Total War. This is the same Crusade mechanic that vanilla chivalry had. Um, and I think it's a really an ingenious solution to the problem of Rome Total War not having a built-in Crusades mechanic. Um, but uh, yeah, this submod is really cool. Perhaps I'll do a Let's Play once I have more time. In about a week or so, I'll be... Um, getting a lot more content out, uh, that's for sure. I'll have a lot more time. Uh, I'll do more streams. I haven't been streaming the past month and a half or so because I've been so busy, but I'll restart the weekly streams, uh, and I'll do a face reveal as I promised, uh, that I would do, um, once I got past 4,000 subscribers. Again, thank you to everyone, uh, for helping to make that happen. Uh, and again, sorry, the channel has been a bit dead lately. I, I just have been too busy to make and upload content. But uh, yeah, things will get back to normal soon. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to say about this uh, third age, uh, third, I was going to say third age total war, uh, third crusade um, campaign for the original Rome total war. Again, a sub mod of the classic chivalry total war. Um, I'm really glad to see this campaign and it makes me excited for, you know, what the, what this based on the remaster could be because of course, you know, we had to remove a couple factions, right, to get the new factions like Georgia and Vladimir in there and Bulgaria. And while I am glad to see those factions, uh, it would be good to be able to keep the factions that were already in chivalry like, uh, Kilikia and, um, Bohemia and the Zerids, and then just uh, add add more factions that would make the game more inf interesting. So, um, yeah, and you know, Portugal, of course, is another big omission in chivalry. Uh, so, of course, yeah, Rome Remastered, one, I really hope they get that patch out soon that increases the faction limit to 31. Uh, like they promised, they are working on it. Um, and I will be doing videos about those patches as they come out. But again, this is for the original Rome Total War. It's a standalone submod, uh, the Third Crusade campaign. Very nice looking submod. I'll, um, I'll, maybe I'll stream this. Maybe this will be my first stream, uh, coming back after my hiatus. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this. You can find it in uh, the link in the description below. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next video.